everybody, how you doing? Welcome to Bones Collector, and this video is a video I've been wanting to make for quite some time, and it's my favorite games out of my library. Now, these are games that give me joy, and as you know, if you're a gamer, you have games that you like that other people think, oh, why would you even like that game? And you're probably going to say that about some of these games, because to be quite frank, even though these games come out of our library, there's some of these games that Lori's not that crazy about. They're just games that I love. And some of them she likes, some of them she doesn't, but we have games that each other isn't that crazy about, but we play them because your partner's crazy about them. So that's the way gaming is. So that when you love a game, it may be a game that for some reason you find that game attractive or you find that game fun, and a lot of other people don't. But here's my point. Don't let other people influence you in that way. If you find a game that you play and you think that game is fun and you like it who cares what anybody else thinks who cares what the bones collector thinks he's a knucklehead who cares what some of these other reviewers say if you like the game play the game own the game love the game and it'll give back to you for the rest of your life and that's the type of games i'm going to show you this evening these are games that i love the most out of my library this is part one i'm going to do another part uh, of this video because I just couldn't fit them all in. But this is part one and I'm going to show you some of these games right now. Okay, so here we go with the first game I want to talk about and that's Dead Men Tell No Tales. And this game was designed by Kane Klenko. Now Kane Klenko did a couple of games that we really loved. Uh, they were real-time games. One was called Fuse and the other one was called um, Flatline. Flatline. Yeah, I, always, I can never remember the name of that game, but we enjoyed those two games. Except they were real-time and that gets kind of frenetic for senior citizens. So we let those games go. But I love Dead Men Tell No Tales. This is a cooperative game and it makes you feel like it is an adventure because of what you're doing in this game. Now in Dead Men Tell No Tales, you're going to be on a pirate ship that's on fire and you, you will lay out tiles almost like a dungeon crawler. And you're gonna lay out tiles of this burning ship, different rooms that you're going to be exploring and in each tile, when you lay them out, is, are going to have dice values printed on them, and you're going to put dice on there of that value because what you're trying to do is keep those dice from exploding. Once they hit six, they, they explode. Now, they come in at different values, so you just got to keep an eye on them as the game goes on. And there's different tiles that do different things and, and spawn different things. Every time you lay out a tile, you have to take tokens out of the bag and put them on the ship. And this game has an action point system that you use and I think five action tokens, and you don't have to use them all, but once you spend what you're going to spend on your turn, you can pass the rest of your action tokens to the person on your left, which in, we always play at two players, so we just give them to each other. So that's pretty cool in this game. I really, really like that aspect of this game. And you have these little wooden deck hands that look like skeleton heads, and they got a patch over the eye. And those deckhands are going to spawn on the board, and they do different damages to you as you go through these tiles, as you travel through this burning rubble of a ship. And it's, uh, it's called Skelet's Revenge is the name of the ship. And you have all these tiles, and I call this game a dungeon crawler because it feels like that. You lay these tiles out as you go, and they do different things, and you can get caught in these rooms. And if you have one of these dice explode on you, and you're in that room, it's going to do damage to you, which is done in fatigue. Then you have this deck of cards that has special items in it, and there's some character cards in here. They're absolutely uh, outstanding. You can see I got this game sleeve because... This game I just love. I'll never get rid of it. Lori and I love to play this cooperative game. It's a tough game to win, that's for sure. Okay, this is your fatigue dial, and you'll keep track of your fatigue. And as you move through the ship, it costs you fatigue points, depending on if you walk or run. And this down here is your battle track and how strong you are in battle, because you're going to be battling skeletons and other monsters on the ship, and it's so much fun. Comes with a bag of dice, these beautiful dice that you're going to put on the board. That's the battle die, that black one, but you're going to put these dice on the board depending on what color the, the tile calls for. And these are the little deck hands. I love these guys. And again, once they spawn in the rooms, uh, depending on how many of them there are in a room, is going to determine what happens to you as a pirate when you enter that room. Those your gold tokens. Now you get a bag with this game. You have to draw blindly out of this bag and populate the board with skeleton crew and so forth. 
And then this is your starting tile that you're going to uh, uh, lay at the bottom. And this is your explosion tracker. It's going to track how many explosions you have. And guess what? If you have too many, you lose. And there's a lot of ways to lose this game. When you're putting out these ship tiles that are on fire, if you can't lay one of these out where the room doorways match up, all players lose. So you have to be careful how you're putting those out. And then you have these seven characters that come with the game. And yes, they would have been much better if Renegade Games had offered these printed or at least washed. They did not. That's the only irritating thing about the publishing of this game. I love this game. It doesn't cost a lot to own it. And there is an expansion for it called the Kraken, which we own also. Which, of course, you don't have to have it. The game is fine without it. And I love Dead Men Tale No Tales, you guys. And I wanted to tell you about it. I am going to put this stuff all in here. And just set that to the side. That's Dead Men Tell No Tales by Kane Klenko, a lovely cooperative adventure game. I just love playing that game, you guys. Now, the next game I want to talk about is kind of a new game. It's new to me for sure, and I think it just came out in 2022. And that's Chronicles of Avell. Now, Chronicles of Avell, and this is the base box, and this is the expansion. Um, it will say right off the top that there are two expansions for this game. One of them is a very inexpensive expansion that costs about six bucks. And you need to get that if you buy this game. I, I want to tell you that because it completes your armor. And I don't know why that wasn't in the base box. And it should have been in there because it just seems incomplete without it. But you need to get that even if you just get the base box. And then if you want to, which I would suggest, this is one of the few games that I say buying expansion for it is outstanding. This new adventures expansion. But let's take a look inside this box, Chronicles of Avell. And in Avell, you're going to be... You're going to have a character, which is pretty cool, and you're going to develop that character. It's kind of nice. It gives you kind of a little feeling like you're, you're really invested in that character. Yeah, I even colored this guy in a little bit. It's smearing off because it's a dry erase. Yeah, but you have your health tracker here, and these big wooden hearts that are going to fit in here. And you get, this thing fits right over top of the board. And you can see you can name your character. That's your backpack. You put this thing in here. So you got a little bit invested in your character. Then your equipment goes on here. Your sword, your helmet, your shield, and then your boots that I told you. You have to get the expansion and get the boots. But that's what you are going to be doing in this game. You're going to have a character that you're going to play. And, boy, there's some. Yeah, this is the walls, the wooden walls you want to put on the uh, castle tile. There's your big wooden health trackers in that bag. Really cool stuff in this game. And then these are the tiles that you're going to have on the board and you start with this castle tile face up and then you'll have three face up starter tiles to begin the game all the other tiles will be face down and you go explore them and when you turn up something like this that is a for a big monster one of the big monsters and i'll show you that and then it has some shops where you can get things this is the tile where you that you need to pay three gold to get a piece of the wall to put in that castle tile I showed you. That's another tile that takes a big monster, but it gives a benefit. Once you defeat it, you can get three gold for going to that tile. This is a small monster tile, and that's a portal. So you have those ingredients in a fantasy uh, fighting adventure game that are really cool. And I, I, I fell in love with this game immediately. I just I couldn't believe how much I liked it. And it's just a simple dice chucker you're going to be chucking dice and fighting monsters from the time you start this game till the end and i really love that uh large monsters companions but yeah these are all the large monsters and they have some companions in there because that six dollar expansion gives you some large monsters and when you defeat that monster you get these uh, familiars i think they're called and they give you a special power and that's pretty cool so those are some of the large monsters and and the companions there and you got these beautiful engraved dice. The black and purple dice are for the monster to battle you, to do damage to you. And the others are what the players are going to use. And this is a cooperative game. I didn't mention that. This is a cooperative game. So you are working together to try to defeat as many monsters as you can, get your character as powerful as you can get it. Because once these tiles get turned over and that big bad beast gets released, all the monsters that are left on the board and the big bad beast are going to come towards the castle and try and overtake that castle and that's why you want to be as strong as you possibly can be and these are uh, seals that you can put on different spots so other monsters won't spawn oh my gosh uh, this is another fun. and then we got stickers to put on our warriors and that's pretty cool it gives a little more uh, flavor to the game Lori loves doing that and I appreciate it when she does it because it makes the game just that much better 
little monsters, this whole bag of the little monsters that you're going to be putting on the board. And you can see their attack dice and the, their health tracker and what you get as a reward. This, in this case, you get an item and you get to draw that out of the bag. Oh my gosh, this game is so cool. And again, you got uh, all these patterns you can lay out depending on the difficulty level you want to use in this game. And this is just such a great little battler, a little cooperative adventure. It feels like an adventure game to me. You're, you have a, an exploration element that you're going to have in this game because you're, you're going to turn those tiles over as you go. And that's so cool in this game, and I love it so much. Laura and I couldn't quit playing it when we first got it. And we've used the expansion part of it. We've used the big sea monster uh, three-headed uh, boss that comes with this one. And boy, he was hard to defeat. But if you've got kids that uh, like that kind of thing, or eat, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I have to apologize for loving this game because it's kind of kitty looking. And these are uh, little um, moons that you're going to use. It's part of one of the campaign missions or whatever. And then this is additional game modes and scenarios. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I meant to say, the scenario. <laughs> I couldn't remember the word. In these extra scenarios, you have these beautiful cardboard components that you'll build and use in this game. Oh, my gosh. I love this game. I love it for so many reasons. And Lori and I had such a good time playing it. This is the... Uh, toolkit, Adventures Toolkit, and that's the one, the expansion I told you costs about six bucks. Very inexpensive to get, but you have to get it with that base game. Then the other one is not all, the, not all that necessary, this great big box expansion, but you get a lot in it, as you can see, and it's so much fun. You're going to be battling these toads, and they're going to move toward a certain space, a special hex tile, all three of them, and you have to stop them before they get there or you lose the game. And then in another scenario, you put all of those moon shard tokens in here, and it has to get to a certain hex. So then you have these beetles, three of these that are, you're going to be dealing with in one of the scenarios. And there's just so much. And these little cardboard minis are so cute, and you build them yourself. I just love them. And here's these moon shards I was talking about, one of each color. See, they're going to put those moon shard tokens on here, and then different mechanics will make that move. And if that moon shard gets to this space right here and falls into here, into this piece, then all players are going to lose the game. But, oh, isn't that cool? That is so cool. So I really, really love that, you guys. And I love this game. Like I say, it's new to me. I, I've only had it this game maybe a couple months, but I'm in love with it from playing it, and it's just outstanding. And that is called The Chronicles of Avell. Yeah, let's get that pushed to the side. I couldn't get it back together. All right, the next game I want to talk about is another game I haven't had for very long. It's from Czech Games Edition, and it's called Sanctum by Philip Nedek. And Sanctum is a game simply about building a character that you're going to play, and you're going to build that character and make him as strong as you can possibly make him in order to survive a gauntlet of the big demon guy at the end of the game, a gauntlet of cards. And you're going to be rolling dice and having fun doing that. But in this game, you have act boards that you're going to use, and you place your miniature. There's four of them in this game, and I wish they had come painted, but at least they're different colors. I will say that. So you get this stuff here. Yeah, you got these four miniatures that are different colors, and the sculpts are really nice. They're nice looking. Uh, the dice that you use in the game and a bunch of monster cards that are going to populate the board. And as you're going up those act board, it tells you how many monsters you're going to spawn on that board. So you got a skill table that you're going to have cards and tiles on. And on that skill table, you want to move gems, these gem tokens, up that skill table every time you defeat monsters you get to move whatever color of uh, gems are on that monster you get to move those gems up one space on that skill table until you empty those skills and they become available to you to put on your character and that's the coolest thing ever man and i just really love this game this is one of the character sheets this is the big bc i mean this guy's a real strong dude but this is your skill table right here and this is just a supply area where once these gems get moved up off the skill table and the cards you'll be able to put on your character over here because he's just got some basic attributes at the beginning of the game and you're trying to get that upgraded as you go and it's so important to do that you start this game out with 10 health right here and that's all you get during the game if you lose health during this point of the game where you're trying to build this character if you lose health during those battles with the monsters and demons you're going to be dealing with 
you can never get it back. So you want to be at 10 or at least on nine when you go to run that gauntlet across the top of this board to battle that big demon at the end of the game. And I'm telling you what, it is so much fun to do that. Because these are double-sided boards, act boards, and you use these depending on the player count, you know, how many of these boards you're going to use. And that's the big demon board that you're going to get to at the end. And then again, you simply are going to place a worker, your worker on one of these spaces right here. And it tells you how many monsters that's going to spawn. It goes, has an icon for what kind. So you're going to have two pairs of each of these and three of, of that. And there's three different decks of monsters at the bottom of the board. So just a fabulous game. Makes me feel adventurous when you go up to fight that big baddie at the end of the game. And then whoever has the most health left at the end of that battle is the winner of the game. And we've played it so many times. And I tell you what, <laughs> Lori's beating me every time this game. She always has one more or two more health than I do. So she beats me. But uh, yeah, it's so much fun, you guys. That's Sanctum. It doesn't get any buzz whatsoever, but I absolutely adore it. And that's Sanctum from Philip Nedick. I think it's from 2019. I'm not sure. But I love that game. Okay, another game I want to talk about, the next game I want to talk about, is an old classic, and that's Lords of Waterdeep. And gosh, what can I say about this game? I love this game from the moment I played it. And it's just a game that every reviewer at one time in their review channel on YouTube has said... This is a Lords of Waterdeep killer. They'll play a game and, and they'll say, yeah, this game is just going to kill Lords of Waterdeep. And it just never happens for me. Yes, there are games out there that do worker placement better. But I love the universe that was created here in this Lords of Waterdeep game. I keep this game pristine. I love it so much. And you have to keep it lying down because the insert will spill the pieces out if you don't. But it's got a funky top on it. You know, a real thin top like that so you got to be very careful of that and I just love this game and you're playing characters and you're trying to become the big boss lord of Waterdeep and there's the rule book and I'll show you the guts here take this board out of the way and that's why I keep it lying down so you're gonna go on quests you're gonna play intrigue cards and you're just you you feel so invested in what you're doing and when you start building buildings in this game, these buildings that you're going to put out, here's a bunch of them, and other players can build buildings, and and if they want to use your buildings, they got to pay you, and I just love that. Now, Lori loves to trick out games, so the game comes with cubes. So you have white, purple, orange, and black cubes. Well, she went out and found me all these little uh, meeples for the game so that I could have... Uh, real people to recruit <laughs> and i really love that she did that because it makes the game so much better but there's a place in this box for everything and it's just a lovely game and i don't know if you i just never get tired of it i don't care this is supposedly in the dungeons and dragons universe and Lori hated this board and i said i want to get that game and she said, i hate the board and i was like oh yeah i know but the game is going to be fantastic and and I made a believer out of her now that we have the, have played this game so many times. She absolutely adores it like I do. It's a very light worker placement game. And I like light. I'm okay with light games. Uh, they play quicker and I don't have to get the rule book out and read them. All right. Now, come on, Biscuits. Get up. My cat just sees an empty lid and she has to lay in it. No matter what's going on. Huh? So... Yeah, that's Lords of Waterdeep. I adore this game. Do you guys have this game? Oh, I hope you do. I hope you have had the chance to play it and love it like I do. Okay, the next game that I'm in love with that I'm going to talk about is Clank Catacombs. Now, Clank Catacombs is a new version of Clank. And if you have Clank, you know what I'm talking about. You love Clank, don't you? And I, we loved Clank. We had Clank for a long time. And we were in a calling mood, and we said, well, this just doesn't quite get to where we want to go, the original Clank. And so we... Uh, sold it and moved it on and when lo and behold they came out with a new version called catacombs where you're actually building the dungeon and that took this game to a new level if you have the other clank the older clank hey we love that game it's fantastic also but we are in love with clank catacombs you guys as you build out uh, all these dungeon tiles and start laying them on the board and putting out your artifacts and in the old version you kind of knew where the artifacts were going to be and and once the game started, you're like, I'm going down there and trying to get that. Uh, but here you have no idea. And there's 
criminals and ghosts and uh, other things that are going on on these tiles. They added some new mechanics that I absolutely love. We bought all these Dragon Shield sleeves and put all of our card decks for the deck building part in these boxes. I love the art on the cards. I love the mechanic that you use in this game to build your deck. Every time I think about playing it, I smile. And the, here's the Ogre Merchant, the Skeleton, the Librarian, uh, Rose Quartz. There's some cool, I just love the art in this game, don't you guys? I mean, look at that. That looks amazing. Look at that. That's a dragon card. So you have to do the dragon thing when that comes out. That's the Ogre Merchant. Just so cool. Oh, my gosh. Look at that guy. Skeletal Ape. Yeah. I mean, there's so much to enjoy about this game. I can't believe anybody would not want to play Clank Catacombs. It's so much fun. We enjoy it so much, Lori and I, when we get to play it. And I love it to the point where, again, it's <laughs> one of those games that I just smile when I think about playing it. I enjoy it so much. And these bags did not come with the game either. Lori got those for me. Uh, you know, and we got these little canisters and things that we put everything in. And then she went out on Etsy, I think, and got stickers to put on the dragon. And there's little characters that you're going to be on the board. We got stickers on those to kind of trick the game out a little bit. She loves doing that. And we do that to our games that we love. And this is Biscuits, what she does. How long have I had the lid off this box? She's in the lid. It's been, literally been seconds. And she's in the lid. This is my cat. She likes to be where I'm at. And she, come on, honey. Oh, yeah. Come on, you. Yeah. I'll take the lid off another game in a second. And that's Clank Catacombs, you guys. All right. Next game I'm going to talk about that I am super in love with is a game I play every Halloween. It's called London Dread, a cooperative game of Victorian horror by Snor Krogh and Asger Johansson. And this game came out, I think, 16 maybe. I saw it sitting on a shelf at Cool Stuff. And as soon as I read it was London Dread, a game of Victorian horror, I was sold because I love Victorian era London, Sherlock Holmes, all that stuff. Just I'm captivated by it. But this is a cooperative game. And the thing that makes this game so different and so fun for me is a couple of different things. The first thing is that you have two different ways that this game is going to be played during the uh, course of the game. You're going to start out with laying uh, encounter cards on this huge board. This board is big. I'm not, should I unfold this? This board is huge. I won't unfold it all. But you can see where you're going to put these dread cards and, and encounter cards on there. You, they're all going to be face down. And you're going to go through and turn those cards up until you find six dread cards, I believe. And once you do that, you don't have to overturn any more encounter cards. But the ones that are turned over, you have to face and defeat as a group. And you're going to do that by planning on this clock, you guys. So you've got 10 minutes, and you're going to take this clock, and it's a dual-layered layered clock, and you, you have these square tokens, and they have numbers on one side and arrows on the other, and you're going to go through and plan together where you're going to be at a certain hour, at a certain time of day, so that you can defeat the encounter that's on the board. And you have 10 minutes. It's a timed game. Uh, this Just this part of it. And once you get this clock programmed, that's it for the real-time part of the game. Then you go and uh, resolve all of those encounter cards on the board. So, and roll dice. I mean, this game is absolutely fantastic. I'm in love with it. And the other thing I wanted to tell you that's beautiful about this game that I adore is they have an app that you don't need to play this game. But it's just a voice actor, and he's reading passages out of the story guide. And, oh my gosh, his voice is so thematic. It's so deep and just spooky. And they have some sound effects in the background with horse hooves and so forth. I giggle when I play this game. I absolutely love it. I have to play it every Halloween at the very least. And then these are the characters, you're going to, thick cardboard characters you're going to be, uh, each one of them and their special abilities and so forth. I love this game, man. I'm telling you. And the thing is, a lot of people will hate this game. They'll hate on it because it's so random. You're rolling dice and... Uh, here's the dice you're going to be rolling, and the dice will screw you. What dice game has dice that won't screw you? I mean, some worse than others, but in this game, 
it can happen in a pretty bad fashion. And once you resolve all those encounters on the board, then you have a final battle that you, and you, you better have max dice because you earn dice for how well you did during those encounters. And you're going to use all those dice in that final battle scene that takes place in the uh, end of the game. And these are the characters with on standees. Oh my gosh. They had this for like $33 at Miniature Mark not that long ago. And they had quite a few copies on there. And I thought, oh my gosh, I wish I could tell people and explain to them how much fun this game is so they could go get a beautiful game for $33 and have a lot of fun. If you like a little bit of horror in the game and oh my gosh All right i'm not putting this away because it's not going well yeah I know. <laughs> i'm just gonna shove this aside hey wait a minute <laughs> put this out here like that and you guys that is london dread and i love this game i hope you have the opportunity to play it if you never have you feel like the room is foggy when you're playing this game because it's just that atmospheric uh when you play it oh man i love that game all right, the next game I want to talk about is Siege of Rundar. And this is by the game doctor himself, Reiner Kinesia. I have this game and I've for probably about, oh gosh, if I had it, had it over a year, a couple of years? Probably a couple of years. A year. And uh, Laura and I played this game at a convention. We tried to play it. We didn't finish it, did we? It was very late at night and I wanted to play it. And we just, we read the rule book, tried to figure it out, did not have much luck in the time frame that we were allotted at that point in time at the convention. And I said, oh, let's just go to bed. I can't, I can't uh, deal with it anymore. So we didn't play it. And then I watched it played on YouTube and I said, yeah, we're going to like that. I buy a copy. So I bought a copy of it and brought it home. And boy, I tell you what a fun experience this is. What do I love about it? Geez, where do I begin? I love the fortress that you're going to be defending. It's in the box. This is the coolest thing ever. Of course, you got lots of cards that you're going to use in the game for various functions. It's a deck building game to a point. Uh, and I say that because it is a deck building game, but you, the cards are hard to acquire because you're getting battered on constantly by the monsters, by a catapult, by a siege tower, and all of that stuff is on top of you and you have to stop what you're doing and try to build your deck. And it's so hard to do, but you need to, you have to because you need those more powerful cards. So you have a deck building element going on. You have this deck that's going to attack you, this orc deck, and it goes from one through five. So you have, I think, 50 cards in here. And a bunch of ones, and then it goes to twos and threes. And as it goes, it's going to spawn more and more monsters. And the monsters are generic. There's the siege tower, and there's the catapult. I love this stuff so much. Tro trolls, orcs, and goblins are the monsters of the day. And they will be on the outside of the board on the table, like standing out here. And then you're going to draw some cards, and it's going to say, you know, these, oh, these orcs are going to move. So they go up onto the wall. And if they get into this main chamber right here where you're going to have 20 gold pieces, the dwarves have had uh, this mine for hundreds of years and it, they found a new vein of gold and they want to protect it. People, word has gotten out. The dwarves have found gold up in that mine and they're going to try and come and get it and you have to protect it. And that's what these guys are trying to do. And to win this game, you have to get out of this fortress with one piece of gold and it is of course the difficulty level is adjustable but even on easy it was very difficult for us to win this game and that's what makes a wonderful game Ryder Kinesia knows what he's doing and as if that's not bad enough all the things you have going on you have to dig a tunnel to even get out of here so all these blocks have to slide down and come out of there and you have rubble here. In order to take a block off of here, you have to remove all of the rubble. And that's the difficulty mechanism, depending on how difficult you want to play the game, is how many pieces of rubble you're going to put in there. But as these pieces come off of here, it's going to spawn more goblins into this chamber. And you cannot have any creatures in this chamber uh, to, and still remove one of these. You have to remove everything out of this chamber. Rubble, uh, monsters, everything's got to be empty. Then you can remove a piece of these on your turn. And then it just, again, keeps spawning goblins as you remove these pieces. And it's so cool because you feel like you're actually digging the tunnel. And I love this game because it has the fortress right in the daggone box. And I was fascinated with that when I first saw it. I mean, I love that thing. 
it's the toy factor is phenomenal because of that. So, I mean, this could have just as easily been a flat board. Would I have liked it as much? No, not at all. Do I like, like it because of this? Yeah, I sure do. I enjoy it because of this castle or this fortress that's in the box. I absolutely love that about it. I can't believe that somebody hadn't thought of that earlier, but that is so much fun. The game is difficult, I will, I will warn you. It's not a game that you're going to overwhelm and win without trying. You have to work pretty hard to uh, win this game, and that is what I really, really love to do is work hard with my wife, Lori, and this is a cooperative game, and, and we enjoy working together because we've worked together our whole lives. <laughs> so cooperative games are something that we really, really like, and I love the Siege of Rundar, you guys. Oh, look. Oh, my gosh. Look at you guys. This is what I have to deal with. Are you serious? <laughs> She's in the lid. Oh, my gosh. All right. Out, honey. Go on. Oh, go on. She just loves to get in my boxes. Okay. Box there. Right. there we go. Okay, the next game I'm going to talk about is World Wonders. This was the game of the year for me in 2023. And every year I think to myself, there's not going to be a game that's going to come out this year that I'm going to be crazy about. How can it possibly? I played so many board games in my lifetime. And every year I get surprised. But World Wonders is fantastic, you guys. This is a game by Zim Mendez and... By Arcane Wonders and Meeple something and Mundus. So those are some of the publishers. It's a polyomino game and you're going to be using some of these world wonders to put out on your board that make your game so beautiful and so much fun. And I can't believe this game has a price point of $35 and change right now. I think it's a game nurse because the publishing job in this game is phenomenal. You're going to enjoy it. Be proud of it. You're going to have the tactile nature of it because of the wonders. It's fantastic. And here's your board, and you're going to be laying polyominoes uh, on here to get different ways to score. And the mechanic that I like the best about this game, and the thing that I love the most, is everybody in this game starts with seven gold every round. So you don't have to worry about going out and getting income. Most games you have to, hey, how am I going to make money? How am I going to get some gold to pay for that or pay for this? You're going to have seven gold for the round. That's it. So you're going through your head, and you have a market board, and it's going to have costs of tiles, and you're going to buy those tiles and put them on your player board. And that's this right here. Yeah. And this is what costs. Two gold, three gold, three gold, four gold, four gold, five gold for that piece, but it covers up a lot of space. So you have seven gold to spend during the round. You know, you buy what you can, or, or depending on your strategy on your board, what, what kind of spaces you need to fill in, that's going to determine how you're going to spend your money. And then whatever you have left over, if you want one of these wonders, you have to spend the rest of your gold to grab that wonder and place it on your board. Now, the timing of that is everything. So maybe there's a wonder that you want really badly and the round just started. You may want to spend all seven of your dollars and say, that's my, that's my round. I'm going to spend seven bucks and get that wonder. And that's a decision you'll have to make. But absolutely so much fun. I love this game. I smile whenever I think about the experiences that we've had already with this game. And these wonders that you're going to put out on the board, of course, they, they cover different spaces. So you're, you're trying to go through your head what you want to do as far as, you know, with your polyomino tiles that you've already laid out and what you have yet to put in there. And I think there's an expansion for this game already, is what I understand. But here's another bag of these wonders. I think you get like 25 wonders. But so interesting, so much fun, so engaging because of this. And your board looks incredible when you're done. There's your markers and deck of cards that goes with the game. Those are your wonder cards right there that go with the, the wonders that you're going to get. And just, I mean, there's so much to this game. This is a wonderful game design. I have so much fun playing this. And again, I just didn't think there would be anything that would overwhelmingly impress me from 2023. But this game sure did. We sleeved everything already because this game's going nowhere. And I want to keep the lid off of it and play it right now. That's how excited I get about this game. Of all these games. All these games I'm showing you, I just want to stop as soon as we're done with the video and start playing them. Because these are the games that I feel are the most fun in my library. And I love telling everybody about them. So the, 
if you haven't had the chance to explore them and to play them, maybe you'll think about it now that you've seen Inside the Box and listen to me rant about it. So, yeah, that's World Wonders, you guys, from 2023, Polyomino Lane Game. All right, the next game I'm going to talk about is Abomination, <laughs> the Heir of Frankenstein from Plaid Hat Games. This game is designed by Dan Blanchett. Hey, Dan Blanchett, I love you, man. I love this game. I didn't think that I was going to feel the way I feel about this game. I'm so impressed with it. This is a straight Euro game, worker placement, but it's got a crazy theme on it about Frankenstein where you're trying to build this monster on your table and acquiring body parts and organs in different stages of composition. I laugh when I play it. I laugh when I think about it. I laugh when I tell people about it. And isn't that what board gaming is all about? I just adore this game. And this is your player sheet that you're going to use and some uh, tech dials you're going to want to move up and get different benefits. And this is your uh, lab where you're going to put body parts in different stages of composition and your charges go here because you have to have some charges in order to uh, turn over the body parts from uh, from muscle to flesh. I think that's how it works. Uh, it's been a while since I had it to the table. Man, I tell you what, Lori and I just cracked up when we played this game. And the board is so cool. All the worker placement spots. And you have scientists that you're going to be. And scientists have assistants. And those assistants can eventually be upgraded to scientists because certain places you have to go with uh, a scientist and certain places an assistant i think they're called that but anyways you can see the different places that you have on the board here this is the public square and they have executions there so if you want some fresh meat you might want to go up there to the public square and get a, a fresh corpse from there and then here uh, that, that's a work volunteer place where you can get some benefits this is the hospital this is the cemetery now if you go to the cemetery you're getting tissue that is pretty decomposed so when it goes on your player sheet you probably have to use it that round or you're going to lose it so you can go there and get that stuff and you have to have a plan in place this game is pretty deep i mean there's a lot going on in this euro game it's a medium weight game but you don't notice it there have been some comments that it drags on a little long it takes a full 90 minutes to play two player but i you know what i don't care i'm laughing the entire time that i'm playing this game and then down here, you can go to the docks and hire some shady characters. You can go down here in the corner, down here to the dark alley. This is the docks. You can go down here to the dark alley. And if you're really desperate for some meat to, to, to make your monster, you can come down here and murder somebody. I mean, I, I, I can't help it. I laugh when I play this game because of the things that we say that you never thought you'd say in your lifetime. Hey, I'm going to go murder somebody. I need some fresh meat. <laughs> to put on my player board. Oh man, to add parts to my monster. And then you have, uh, of course, on your player sheet here, I failed to show you, your monster is going to be built right here. And it is so much fun. I don't think I've ever completed a monster. The goal is to score the most points, but if you score that monster, if you can build that monster, you get a lot of bonus points, and I don't think I've ever done it. And then you got these uh, pieces and decks of cards and there's some pretty gruesome ones and here I will have to admit they're pretty scary looking a little bit of it you know because you eat they're dead people I mean let's see what we got here Leopold the vast and these might be people that are down at the docks I can't remember okay there's morgue cards let's see what we got here the Captain Walton humanity okay there's a uh, that, that guy's probably at the graveyard so if you dig him up you're not going to do very good you, the tissue you're going to get isn't going to be very good and you can see some of these are, are pretty awesome looking. <laughs> when I first saw this game, I thought, I'm not going to like that. It's too gross or too horrific, but it's not. You, you just make jokes about it. It's so much fun and so funny to play this game because, again, oh. the things that will come out of your mouth during this game that just make everybody at the table laugh. And isn't that the point of playing a board game? <laughs> but uh, I just love this game. It's, again, it's my second favorite Halloween game right behind London Dread. And the only thing that pushes London Dread over the top is that voice actor that I can play when I'm playing that game. It does it for me. I just enjoy that stupid thing. Oh, let's see. we got some more cards in here. I'll show you guys. Oh, my gosh. Check that guy out. <laughs> pretty sure he got a bullet to the head. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. 
But the, all these cadavers you can acquire at different locations, depending on the location where you find them, it tells you how, how many body parts you're going to get and where they go in, in your laboratory so that they're going to be decomposed after every round. Hospital thief. These must be hospital thief. I think these are shaky characters that are down at the docks. Cutthroat, body snatcher, the bone man. Hospital thief again. Cut. <laughs> okay, there's some repeats here. Dog catcher. So very cool stuff in this game, guys. Body snatcher again. And oh, I mean just oh, just a, such a fun game to play. I just want to. Again, stop what I'm doing right now and play this game. That's how much fun this game is. And I thank Dan Blanchett for just taking some Euro mechanisms and putting a kind of a Meritrashy theme on it and making a very interesting exercise uh, and a very interesting Euro game to play. This is outstanding. These are your different organ types and stuff like that. But, and you got some beautiful dice you're going to roll, uh, engraved dice. So cool. Big deck of cards here. I could go on all day about this game. I just adore it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. And this game, believe it or not, was $26. And you get so much in the box. It was $26 on sale at Game Nerds. And, I, I, you know, I get games from Game Nerds, so I like to give them a shout-out whenever I can. When you get your game from Game Nerds, it's going to be packaged beautifully. It will not come damaged. They wrap them in bubble wrap and make sure that that... Uh, game gets to you in superb shape so that you don't have any damage to your game. They had about 20 copies three or four days ago, and they sold every one of them already, and they're gone, and they're out of stock again. But if you can get your hands on this game, again, for an inexpensive price, you guys. Abomination, the Era of Frankenstein. Wow. Okay, the next game I'm going to talk about is a game by Brian Schur and Andrew Bosley did the art in this game. Matter of fact, Andrew Bosley did the art in Siege of Rundar also. I forgot to mention that. So Andrew Bosley, just a great gaming artist. But this is my game of the year, and it tied with Ori Calcum for 2022. Yeah. And Merchants of the Dark Road. Oh, I love this game so much, you guys. And in this game, this is quite a big box. This is the, the deluxe. I backed this on Kickstarter so that in this lid somewhere, it says Bones Collector. <laughs> but... Uh, I backed this game, and then I made the mistake of watching some reviewers talk about this game. And some of them were good, some of them were negative. And I thought, oh my gosh, did I back this game, and it's not going to be fun for me? Oh man, I tell you what, I love this game. These are the silk purses that you're going to use to put your money in. And during this game, whichever is least, your money or points on the point track, that's going to be your score when you go to figure out who won the game. And every one of these purses are stitched, and it matches your wagon that you're going to use in this game. And they didn't have to go to that kind of detail, but oh my gosh, how cool is that that they did? And your avatar that's on the board is also going to match your purse. So absolutely outstanding. Now, I'm not going to tear this game apart because I tell you what, I will say this. This storage solution in here, it's hard to get everything back in the box in this game. And the game board comes in these puzzle pieces like this. You have to put all this together. It has a market speculation dial. I mean, some beautiful dice in this game that you're going to use for different functions. And everything about the publishing of this game is fantastic. I'll take some of this out of here so I can show you what I'm talking about. These dual-layered player boards. And again, this is a deluxe version. They do make a standard version. I've not seen it. I don't know what the differences are. As you can see, this, this double-layered player board. And you have a limited amount of storage in this game. Uh, down here, you have horseshoes and crystals that you're going to use for a resource in this game or for X. And, and they, they activate different things. But you can only store that much of them. That's so hard. And then you have a little space here where you're going to put different items. And you have to be able to fit them in that area. So you have to plan when you're playing this game what you're using. Your lanterns go up here. And this is a dice game. You're going to have dice down here on this wheel. Uh, they're called night dice, I believe. Uh, and you're, it's a dice bumping mechanic, which feels so fresh, where you're going to bump a die up through here, and wherever it goes through, that is the benefit or the action you're going to take. And it has a chart here on the side. And this wagon, again, matches one of these purses. This is going to match the purse and your wooden avatar that's on the board. And that's for that one there. 
it matches it identically. This is the white one. You can see how it is exactly that wagon. So cool that they did that. And then you have the round top. Oh wait, that's the round top one. That one goes with that one. This one goes with the orange one. I love that. And then you have this one for the yellow one. It goes right there. So, so neat. And they, again, they didn't have to pay attention to that kind of detail. And then the, one of the cool things about this game is you have dark road cards. During this game, when you complete a cards over in the village, you can either choose to take a shortcut or the dark road. And there's a little bit of flavor text on these cards that make the game so much more immersive. And I have, I'm not going to take this stuff out because it is so hard to get back in. But these game trays, storage solutions, come with it. I'll take that out and make the game a lot easier to set up as you can see and and this is two pieces and they hold everything in here I guess it wasn't that bad I mean I'll put this back in here but yeah oh anyways yeah that's the last game of this video it's Merchants of the Dark Road I hope you guys get a chance to play this game again you're using a rondelle on that board I showed you and your avatar is going to move around that board and on every place on the board you're going to have a couple of actions that you can choose from. It's such a delicious game. It's light, light to medium I guess was the way I would describe it, but I enjoy it so much when we play it. I just, I, I love looking at it, I love playing it, I love putting on some like adventure music when we play it and dimming the lights a little bit and you feel like you are indeed a merchant of the dark road and I thank Brian Shore for giving us an outstanding little Euro game to play and we enjoy it very much. That's Merchants of the Dark Road. Okay that was the 10 games that I wanted to show you this evening that are special to me. They have a special place in my heart. Some because of nostalgia and some just because they take me to some place other than here. If you know what I mean. I escape reality through my board games and those 10 I just showed you give me that satisfaction. So please like and please subscribe. I love every one of you. Keep on board gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. And I'll see you next time here on The Bones Collector. Bye-bye.